Now, what's the most ap appropriate toxic waste dump? Excess right. body fat. And it turns out there are unique mechanisms in our genetics that as the levels of arachidonic acid or toxic fat increase. They kind of store they, in the fat cells? No, they stimulate the fat. For more fat. To make more fat cells to basically act as toxic waste dumps to suck it out of the circulation. And this leads to a very interesting paradox. And that is overweight people live longer than normal weight people. That's a radical statement, Dr. Sears. Well, radical, but true. <laughs> it comes from such a, basically, uh, an off the, you know, off the uh, you know, wall organization called the Centers for Disease <laughs> Control. And they said, let's just look, you know, we got all those numbers here, let's look at, say, a simple aspect, death. We can, you know, I don't care what you die of, do you die? And look at how that is related to your percent body fat. Well, it turns out the people who are overweight at all age groups were living longer than people who are normal weight. And yes, at the extremes, the very, very obese and the very, very thin, the rates of you know, death would go up. Yeah. But in that section of where you had the lowest death rates, it was the overweight people who were living the longest. Well, how to explain this? Well, you could say, liar, liar, pants on fire to the <laughs> CDC, but that's not the And that's what Harvard did, say, like, you liar, liar. <laughs> well, no, they, because it Mayo, couldn't be. Mayo Clinic did the same thing, say, came, same results. CDC did again, say, same results. This is in your book, I remember yes. reading that too. So how can we explain this? Well, it turns out it's far better to be fat than inflamed. Because fat, basically, you know, that's not a disease state. Obesity is not a disease. It's only when the toxic, the inflammation consequence will be begin to spread into the bloodstream. That can Hit basically attacking be the, other organs. That becomes a smoking gun that links obesity to other How diseases. How do you know when that is happening? Like, I'm, my, it's perfect lead into my next question. Is there any test that can tell someone if well, this toxic me, fat is getting you, out of hand? Let me ask you a question. How do you know what your cholesterol levels are? Blood test. Well, can you look at somebody? Nope. That's right. Same thing is true about toxic fat. The only way we do is a blood test. Now, we have developed a blood test, but there are uh, certain ways that you can do without the blood test. Now, that's important because I hate blood tests. That's why I have an annual physical every five years. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you're looking at is saying, uh, not any one question, but if you answer yes to more than three of these questions, you probably have high levels of toxic this fat. This is like a clinical yeah. test. Like, what a, what like going to Midas muffler. <laughs> so that you'll say, okay, one, are you overweight? Not by itself is not sufficient, but that's one question. There's two-thirds Americans. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you taking a statin? To, Statin drug. To lower cholesterol. Yeah. Uh, if like the, Lipitor or Prevacor or... Any of those, anything's the statin, basically, yep. that will raise the levels of toxic fat. Or are you taking uh, drugs to basically treat hypertension, like diuretics or uh, beta blockers? That will basically increase levels of toxic <laughs> fat. Or are you basically groggy upon awakening? Or are your fingernails a little brittle? Or are you all constantly craving carbohydrates? Or are you especially hungry two hours after dinner? And this sounds a little like looking at pigeon entrails, but if you can answer yes to more than three of those questions, you probably have high levels of toxic fat, no blood test required. Let me yeah. ask you another question. Um, we hear so much about metabolic syndrome right. with high uh, triglyceride, low HDL, adiposity around the central sense, you know, around the uh, stomach. Would that sort of give the clue to the clinician as well, or is that something totally different? Oh, no. That, that's Would that the first, be on the same, that's same page? The, that's the first sign that toxic fat is now being, being spreading. Basically, it's, it's leaching out of the bloodstream mm. into the system and causing inflammation primarily into the muscle cells, which gives rise to all those aspects, and they also in the liver, of basically what we call metabolic syndrome. Now, this is kind of a leaching out of toxic waste into the bloodstream. Now, when it begins to basically really flow, now you've got metastatic fat. So it's, and, it's, it's metastasizing like a and, cancer. Yeah, and now basically you're going to have some real problems. Now you're going to see the first clinical sign. Is that why you're saying it's like a cancer? Exactly. Just that by basically that, you know, if, uh, if you have, let's say, a, a tumor, it could be a benign tumor, it might be as big as a basketball, but it doesn't impede cellular function. You can live with that for a long time. But if that tumor metastasizes and goes throughout the body and starts growing in other areas and compromising body function, you're going to die very quickly. Now, this means that people who are overweight, well, they have, they've got a benign tumor. They've got a tumor, 
It's big. You can see it. But it's benign. The toxicity is now encapsulated. Mm -hmm. They're going to live a long time. They're not going to look very good in swimsuits, but they're going to live a long time. But if that toxicity begins to leach out and travel through the bloodstream to basically insert itself into every other cell, your basically your lifetime is going to be now shortened. It's going to be a more brutal lifetime. Once you develop type two diabetes, you might as well take ten to fifteen years off the calendar. So that's why we say, oh, if he's obese, he's going to die tomorrow. No, yeah, we just don't see that in literature. No, but what you're finding a surprising number of obese individuals, about one third, are completely healthy. A surprising number of lean individuals, they look good in swimsuits, are unhealthy. So I was saying from the standpoint, looks are very deceiving. Mm. Example, uh, one of the patients I work with is the heaviest man in the world, oh, I <laughs> Manuel Reby. Now, when we first started, how much was it? How much did he weigh at the, when, when we first, first started, started working with Manuel? He weighed over 1,200 pounds. Now, uh, to date, he's lost, but we knew he'd be successful because we measured his blood. He said he was inflamed. He said this will be easy. Now, in the last two and a half years, he's lost about 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, he's still about 800 pounds. He's big. But his but levels of inflammation have oh, gone down. And he may be the healthiest man in Mexico. Uh, his blood uh, cholesterol, perfectly normal. Blood sugar, perfect. Blood pressure, they have a teenager. Resting heart rate, they have a trained athlete, even though he hasn't left his bed <laughs> in seven years. I cannot make the man any healthier. Now, does he have another you know, 300 or 500 pounds to go? Yes, he does. But I'm going out the next weekend to be the best man at Manuel's wedding. Wow, congratulations. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's saying, that's a dissociation. You cannot look at a person and, 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 and say if they have toxic fat. But we understand. You have those clinical features, but you also mentioned that there's, just recently you just